In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the new quad cross spiral twist bracelet using the monster tail loom. And this is what it looks like. It has four colors that spiral around. And I had originally come up with the double cross spiral twist, which looks like this, and it's on the thin side. And then I did the triple cross spiral twist, which was a thicker bracelet. And now this quad cross is going to be the thickest of them all. So if you have a very thin wrist, it might be a little big for your wrist, but it's a pretty cool pattern that you can incorporate four colors into. And if you don't like it for a bracelet, it would be nice for a keychain or something like that. You will need about 200 rubber bands to make this bracelet. And I have chosen some metallic colors. I have blue, yellow, and green, and then I also have black. So you're going to start by placing your first color on the loom. So I'll take blue, and it's going to go on the very end pin that's closest to you to the very top pin. It's going to be a long stretch, and you do want to twist this just for this bottom layer. And now I'll go to my second color, which I have yellow, and I'm going to move to the next pin up on the right hand side, and this is going to do a long diagonal stretch to the top pin on the left. Again, I do want to twist. And now I'm just going to work my way up the right side here, so I'm in the middle, taking my next color, which is green, and it's going to go straight across. And again, I do want to twist. And then finally I have black. I'm going to that next pin up and it's going to do a long stretch all the way down to the bottom left and twist. Push that down. So that's the pattern that I'm going to follow. I'm always going to start on the bottom and just work my way around here putting the bands on. So I'm going to do a second layer and I want the colors to stay in the same position for this layer. So I'm starting with blue at the bottom, going all the way to the top. Now there's no need to twist anymore. I'm going to move to the next pin over to the right. It's going diagonally up and to the left with yellow. And now in the center I have green that's going to go straight across. And then finally I have black which is going from the top right to the bottom left and push that down. So now I'm ready to start on my third layer and I'm always starting on the bottom pin but this time I want to move the position of the colors. So I'm going to move everything in a clockwise direction. So since yellow was up here and I want to start here I want the yellow to move down in this clockwise direction as with all the colors. So yellow is going to slide down here, so I'm going to start with yellow at the bottom, going all the way up, and then green is going to come down in this clockwise direction. If you picture this as a circle, they're all moving down one. So green will be next, starting here and going up to the top left. And then black's going to slide down, so black's going to come straight across. And then finally blue was at the top, so that's sliding down. And it's going to go to the bottom left. So I know that part might be a little bit confusing, but that's the order we're going to follow for the rest of the bracelet. So now that I have three layers on, I want the bottom layer to come off. So from the one closest to me, I'm grabbing the bottom band. It's blue, and it's going to come over the top. And now I'm just going to go around to all of the pins and remove that bottom rubber band, pulling it over the top and into the middle. At the top here, I'm taking the bottom blue. And now on the left side, I'm just taking that bottom rubber band Pulling it over into the middle and push down. And now from this point on, 
Every time we take a bottom layer off like we just did, we want to shift the top layer so that the colors are in line with one another again. So in my previous videos for the double and the triple, it was a little bit easier because we had extra pins that we would place a rubber band on as a placeholder to get it out of the way. But with this one, we don't have any extra pins. So I will start at the bottom here, and I want the colors to shift in a counterclockwise direction so that they're all in line with one another again. So what I'm going to do is take this top color, which is yellow, and I'm going to just get it on my hook. And now I'm just going to leave it on my hook, and I want all of the colors to move down in this counterclockwise direction. So blue that's on this left pin is going to have to slide down. So I'm going to hold this yellow band on my hook. I'm going to pick up the blue band. So now I'll have two bands on my hook, and I'm going to just place them both on the top here. So the yellow's not going to stay there. I'm just going to use that as a placeholder for now. But the blue is now in line with the other blue like we want. And now I can shift everything in that counterclockwise direction. So this black can come off of the center pin on the left, and it can slide down to where it belongs. And now the green can come off of the top left pin. Again, it can just slide right down to where it belongs in the middle. Now at the top, the yellow is going to slide over to the left. And on this side, the blue on the top right is going to move up to the very top. And now the black. And now the green at the bottom right can move up to the middle. And now finally this yellow band that we had on our hook initially can come off of the bottom pin and slide where it belongs. I know this is a little bit tricky and it is an advanced design so hopefully you're able to get the concept and you can see that everything as far as the colors is lined up again and that's what you want to happen. So you need to make sure that that is the way that your loom looks, that all the colors are together. And so now I'm going to put my next layer on. I'm always going to do the pattern where the previous color is going to move in that clockwise direction. So again, I'm always starting with the bottom here and I'm always going to be starting with yellow from now on. And then since green was in the middle, it's going to move the, in this clockwise direction, so green will be next. Black was at the top, so that's moving down. So that's going straight across. And then finally, blue is going from the top right to the bottom left. And push down. Now once again, I want to remove the bottom layer. So I'll start at the bottom here. I'm just getting that bottom rubber band to come over the top and into the middle. I'm going to do that for all of the pins. Push this down. And now comes the step where I need to get all of the rubber bands back in line with the right colors. So again, I'm starting on the bottom here. I'm going to take this yellow band and get it on my hook. I'm leaving it on my hook. Now I'm going to this bottom left pin. I'm going to pick up the blue band. Get that on my hook. So now I have the two bands on there. And I'm going to put them both on this bottom pin. Now remember, the yellow is just here as a placeholder, but this makes this pin available to shift everything down. So I'm taking this black in the center, and it's going to move to the next pin down. And now the green can move down. And then at the top here, the yellow can move to that upper left pin. 
and the blue can move up. Now the black and then the green can move to the center and finally this yellow can go in its right spot and push down. And now for the next layer again I'm starting at the bottom going to always start with the yellow and then green will be next black will go straight across in the middle and then blue at the top now I want to remove the bottom layer just going around to all of them I'm going to push this down and now once again everything has to shift in that counterclockwise direction so that it's lined up again so I'm starting by getting the yellow one on my hook and now I'm going to pick up the blue and both of these are going to go back to this bottom pin and now I'm going to take all of these top bands and move them so they're lined up just be careful as you're doing this that you don't let the band slip off your hook because if you do happen to lose a band it's kind of hard to get everything back on since you're doing this twisting every time and now the greens moving up and finally I have the yellow to move in place going to push this all down and you can see your bracelet is going to just grow through this open area so let me show you this one more time I'm starting with the yellow it's going from the bottom all the way to the top and now I'm just going to work my way around so green will be next then black in the middle and then blue. I'm removing the bottom layer just going around to all the pins push this down and now I'm getting this yellow band on my hook whatever color you're working with on this bottom pin keeping that on my hook going to this next pin to the left going to get the blue band on now I'm going to put them both on the bottom pin and now I'm able to start shifting so the black one will move down and then the blue at the top here the yellow will move over now the black and then finally the yellow can come off the bottom and move to its correct spot and see once again they're all in line with each other so I'm just going to continue on in the same pattern and when the bracelet gets long enough I will show you what to do to remove it from the loom
When you have your bracelet to the length that you'd like it and you're ready to take it off of the loom, you should have two rubber bands on all of the pins. So the first thing you're going to do is remove the bottom rubber band from all of the pins. Do the same thing on the other side here. So now there's just one band left on each of the pins. So I'll start here at the bottom. I'm going to take this blue band and move it across to the other side. I'll move over to the right here. I'm just going to take it and move it to the opposite side. And now green will go straight across. And then finally, the one on the top right goes down to the bottom left. And now once again, I want the bottom rubber band to come over the top. So now I just have four rubber bands left. I'm going to get them all on my hook, just one at a time. Now I can take this off and I'm going to take a clip. I have an S clip here. You can use whatever clip you have available. And I'm just going to loop the bottom two through the top two. So now I have just two rubber bands left. I'm just going to hook them through the clip. And then I'll go on the other side here and I'll just take a couple of the loose bands on the end. And I'll put them through the other side here. And then here is my bracelet. And then here's the other one that I showed you at the beginning. And I just realized at the end here that I actually spiraled this one the opposite direction. So if you look at the two, they're spiraling in different directions which that's perfectly fine. You can do it either way. I hope that everyone was able to follow along and had fun making their quad cross spiral twist bracelet. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook, post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page, and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!